Now some of you mentioned in the comments of my recent videos that I should test the Phobia Nano Grease Extreme as well as the Alpha Cool Sub-Zero Thermal Grease. So I actually purchased both of them already in last spring, but I haven't tested the pastes that, that well yet. So uh, I'm still currently uh, doing the uh, Arctic MX-5 testing, so currently I'm running a second mount with KPX, currently in Pro95. So I thought about testing these out now as well. So I will just add these to the same graph, but I will post the uh, MX-5 results in their own video first, and then I will post the video about these pastes later. So uh, these have pretty much the same specs, so 16 watts per meter Kelvin, thermal conductivity rating, so it's actually pretty high. It's uh, one of the highest I've seen on the market. But again, I don't trust those figures. They could be just thrown from somewhere. So uh, these pastes could end up being pretty much the same story as the Thermalrite TFX, which had, I think, like 14.3 watts per meter Kelvin. I tested that out already like almost two years ago, I think, and it, was, it wasn't very good. It was significantly or visibly behind Kim Ping Cooling KPX. So, uh, but anyway, so even though this is labeled as sub zero thermal grease, let's test this out. Test, let's test it out as well as the Phobia Nano Grease Extreme, just in the same test setup against Kim Ping Cooling KPX. And obviously, the MX5 will be in the same graph and based on how it compares to KPX, you can kind of think how well they would compare against Cryon Out, Cryon Out Extreme and GC Extreme, as I already tested those last year or so, so pretty much. But yeah, so I really think these pastes are just copies of each other. Same rating on the paper, same viscosity levels and so on. The only difference is uh, a bit on the price. So the uh, Alpha Cool was uh, around 10 euros on German aqua tuning and uh, the Phobia Nano Grease Extreme was like 12.5 euros. So those are 3.5 gram size tubes, so uh, the gram price is uh, between 3 and 4 euros. So uh, not the cheapest thermal pastes, but uh, not anything like ridiculously expensive either, like the Cryonaut, like the Cryonaut Extreme. So uh, once my testing has finished currently with the uh, MX-5, I will just do the same test on these pastes, so stay tuned, I will come back with the results and let's see how well these pastes can actually perform. And okay, so after a few days it's finally time to wrap up all of the results. So I already posted the video about the MX-5 results, so it's finally time to post the results with the Alpha Cool Sub-Zero Thermal Grease as well as with the Phobia Nano Grease Extreme. And it actually went better than what I expected at the beginning. So I really thought that these are just clones, like almost like almost like copies of the Thermalrite TFX because they all of all of them have like similar tone in the thermal paste itself and a particularly like annoying smell that really stands out from the crowd. Like when you apply it, it really smells really weird compared to many other thermal pastes that I've tested over the years. But anyway, so let's look at the graphs themselves. So uh, here in the first graph, I have uh, added both of the thermal pastes. So the Alpha Cool Sub-Zero Thermal Grease is the gray colored column and the Phobia Nano Grease Extreme is the darkest blue colored column. But of course, we just want to look at the Delta temperature results. So let's look at them straight away. So on the left, we have the same results in R15 and on the right we have the delta temperature results in Pro95. This is pretty much the same graph as in the MX5 video. I have just added both of these thermal pastes in the same graph. But anyways, I might stop using the R15 test altogether for this kind of uh, like uh, thermal paste comparisons because running R15 is not as reliable as uh, something like Pro95 because I don't have the ways to measure the temperature of the water itself inside the water loop. So uh, when I'm just measuring the ambient room temperature, it's uh, not as reliable in a very quick test like City Bench compared to a long run in Pro95. When I was running Pro95, I, I was actually logging the maximum uh, temperature value throughout the whole 30 minute run. So that's really, uh, that's the most accurate way to measure 
the uh, ambient room temperature for me for now. But anyways, I think it's good enough for this purpose. But uh, yeah, so if we look at the R15 results, both of the pastes were a touch behind the MX-5. So 42.478 for the Alpha Cool, Sub-Zero Thermal Grease and 42.672. So these are the average values of nine runs, three individual mounts, but still like around two and a half degrees behind KPX. Now, if you look at Prime 95, the uh, Alpha Cool Sub-Zero Thermal Grease was a bit ahead, the MX-5 and uh, the Phobia one was a touch behind MX-5, but still like uh, almost two and a half, but over two degrees worse than KPX anyway. So uh, that tells us that you cannot just trust the paper values alone, at least when uh, comparing or running or using thermal pastes between standard CPU IHS and a water block. Some people have been telling me in the comments section that thermal pastes vary a lot more depending on where they are applied to, like a standard IHS or a lapped IHS or a naked die. It could be a naked die between a deleted CPU, so between the die and the IHS, or some naked chip in a laptop between a graphics card GPU and the cooling solution. So it varies, but this is just, this is like the most basic way to compare thermal pastes. I have seen thermal pastes giving a lot more like uh, differences when they are compared on a deleted CPU, so between the die and the IHS, but I think comparing the pastes themselves between a normal IHS and a water block like this is the most reliable way to give like some basic idea on how the thermal pastes performs, because this is the most like basic way what, which people will be like applying the thermal paste with. So I think this is the best way to do this. So uh, that means that these thermal pastes are good, but they are not like the best on the market. So uh, it's hard to say like, should you buy these? Don't know. They aren't bad at all, but they are not among the best options on the market. Like they are like, for example, behind G6 Dream, that's pretty much in the same price range as both of these. And uh, the G6 Dream only has 8.5 watts per meter Kelvin on paper and in my high-end thermal paste comparison video which I made last year G6 Dream was only like one degree behind KPX if I remember correctly a bit over one degree so based on that test G6 Dream should be performing should be uh, performing like one degree better than both of these two thermal pastes and when they are so close to the MX5 yet they cost more, why not sure why would you buy these pastes over the Arctic MX-5 again. But anyways, the same rule still applies. So if you are building, let's say like a normal daily use computer, you should purchase the best possible thermal paste that you can find. And also which will last for a very long time. If you are going to apply the thermal paste only once, maybe just once between the CPU and the cooling solution and maybe replace the stock thermal paste on your graphics card as well. You want something, so if you are going to be using that setup without any changes for many years to come, like three years, four years, even five years or more, you want thermal paste that will last for a very long time. When it comes to the Arctic MX-5, at least they advertise an eight year durability for the MX-5 and that could be true, which I already said, but Based on the comments of my video, there are some like uh, there are differences in the user experiences based on those comments. So for some people, even that thermal paste has lasted for a very long time, and for some, it hasn't lasted that long. Based on the surface where it has been applied to, but anyway, so at least they did a lot better than the thermal right TFX. So I'm very happy about that. Not sure how well would they perform on like uh, Sub-Zero cooling, I could test that later. But uh, so far quite good, but still I didn't find what I was looking for. So a thermal paste that could clearly beat the highest end offerings on the market, like the KPX, Cryonaut Extreme, Cryonaut and GC Extreme. I want to see a thermal paste that will go to, uh, that will do like 42 degree delta temperature result in this very same test. I have some uh, New pastes coming from AliExpress yet again. I purchased a huge list of so-called 
high-end thermal pastes from AliExpress. I will be waiting for all of them to come before I make any videos about those pastes. So uh, stay tuned for those and let me know what you think about these two thermal pastes. Would you buy them? What do you think about them? And give, definitely give me a thumbs up if you like to see these thermal paste comparisons. And uh, yeah, drop a comment down below if you have some ideas. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.